Hey guys, if you've seen my previous videos, you may have seen me sleeping out in a Wiggy's bag in minus 9 Celsius. And it performed excellently. So excellently, in fact, that I had to buy my own. The one I used for that video, I borrowed from my friend. And he didn't want to lend it to me again after that, which is understandable. It's a pretty personal thing, a sleeping bag. So, I had to get my own, like I said. So what I got was, on the left here, the Ultima Thule, which is rated to down to negative 20 Celsius. And what we have here on the right is the overbag, the FR FTRSS overbag. And they work together, and when combined, they're good to minus 60 Celsius, which is outrageous. I hope to never, ever have to be exposed to such an environment, but if I am, there we go. We're done. Covered. Tonight's focus is going to be just the overbag. The date is October 29th, 2011, and where I am in Canada, it's going to get down to minus one degrees Celsius, which isn't all that cold, except this bag is only rated down to one and a half degrees Celsius. Like I said, I'm not going to be using this one at all. That's for other colder demonstrations. I'll just be using this one, the overbag. Now, tonight's test is going to be dry. I'm not going to soak the bag or anything. In the future, I will definitely be doing a wet bag test in cold weather. So, hold tight for that one. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on the overbag and whether or not it meets that rating of 1.5 degrees Celsius. What I'll be sleeping on underneath the bag is this mech small Kelvin. It's inflatable. I've used it many many times before. It's an excellent little Thermo rest. Okay guys, I don't think you're going to be able to see much here, but basically this is the setup in the back of my truck. Like I said, in front of my house. There's the bag there. I'm using the Wiggies pillow that comes with the Ultima Thule. A few facts about Wiggies if you don't know already. Wiggies bags are machine washable and they'll actually bring back the loft. It'll return the loft of the bag. You can compress these and store them fully compressed without loss of loft. There's a lifetime warranty on them. And it's also rumored that they will keep you warm even when they're wet. So, like I said, tonight's a dry test. In the future, I will definitely be hosing it down and trying it out with it soaked in colder conditions. But tonight is a tame exercise. Okay, I'm in the bag. I doubt that you can see me. I think I can see my teeth a little bit. I'm not wearing a toque. Usually I would be wearing a toque for sleeping outside. But for this test I want to try without a toque or any hat of any kind. I've got some light cotton socks on cotton pants, cotton boxers, cotton shirt, all the things you're not supposed to have when you sleep outside. <laughs> but that's okay, it's just a test. I've got a fleece on as well that I may take off, depending on how warm I am. I would like to try just in a t-shirt, but we'll see how that goes. I could have used the stuff sack for a pillow, put some clothing in it, but I wanted to try this Wiggy's pillow that came with it, give it a shot. It didn't take long for me to warm up inside of it. I'm not cold at all inside of the bag. And I believe it's down to minus one already. It's around 11 o'clock p.m. Anyway, if I wake up during the night and have anything to say or it's too cold or I've woken up, I have to use the bathroom, but it's really warm in here still. I'll keep you posted. I'll be sure to keep on turn on the camera. 
getting tired already and capture it and of course in the morning I'll give you a full recap and maybe some pictures or even I'll ask Sarah to come out and film me in the back of the truck to see what it, what it looks like when someone's in the bag what the drawstring is like how it all works anyway I'm starting to ramble now I'm obviously getting tired signing off until I see you next time all right so it's 10 to 5 right now I made it till this time and it was bearable but the high points like my hip and my shoulder where the, most of the compression occurs on the sleeping bag those were the cold spots overall it wasn't bad I could suffer through the night and excuse me what I said I could suffer through the night and and freeze like I've done so many times before and I would be fine but what this shows me is that for a comfortable sleep the kind of sleep that I would want in a bug out evasion situation even camping where I want to enjoy myself to the maximum I want to get as much proper sleep as I can so really what this shows me is that even down to minus one I'm probably going to want that Ultima Thule maybe not with the overbag because that minus 60 rating will be a little overkill but at least the minus 20 rating that would be nice so hopefully you don't feel disappointed that I pulled the plug at 10 to 5 because I have been out there for 7 hours 6 or 7 hours my math skills are a little bit lacking right now so that's one test like I said earlier in this video though I am going to go outside in the morning and, and show you the setup that I had and give you more of a rundown. The drawstring was a little bit of a challenge too. I don't. It was hard to line up my my mouth and nose when I was. Oh, excuse me. When I was uh, rolling over, for example, I'll say on my right side, the bag the hole wasn't lining up with my face all that easily. So that maybe that's something you have to try to figure out during the day in the daylight. So probably the next video segment you see that I attach to this here, excuse me, will be the setup that I had. I'll show you that when it's daylight outside. Okay, so instead of calling it quits, I took the Ultima Thule and put it out. And I noticed a huge difference right away when I got in. And the difference being that this is a much thicker bag. And I was instantly, instantly warm. Not a cold spot in the house. And I've been in here for probably for a 20 30 minutes now there's a little less room in this bag but that's because this isn't the over bag so it's a little tighter that way but that's fine but wow is it ever warm am I ever toasty in this this is really gonna cut it now the question will be with ongoing testing how far how cold can I use this minus 20 rated bag so that'll be interesting to see. Anyway, like I said before, I'll show you the setup in the morning. So does red meat go? Yes. <laughs> so when I switched it to the Ultimate Thule bag, I got a lot warmer. I slept easily. There's no cold spots to speak of. The drawstring right here works very well. And. I'm confident now that in colder weather this bag will do me right. The over bag just wasn't warm enough for minus one conditions so I had to switch to this.
Okay, so here's a wrap up. On the left is the overbag, FTRSS overbag, that works in conjunction with the bag on the right, which is the Ultima Thule. I started out with the one on the left that's rated to 35 Fahrenheit, and it got below that. And for me, I'm about a medium sleeper, so it just wasn't enough. Yeah, I could have suffered through it like I have many other times and many other videos and nights that I've had out. But what I did instead was jumped up to this. I went and switched it for this. And right away, it was way warmer. Obviously, it's got a minus 20 Fahrenheit rating instead of 35 degree rating. So, big difference. I wasn't surprised about that. I was very toasty right away in it. The drawstring worked excellently. The pillow must be the exact size pillow that you need for these systems because that was really all the room that I had when this was cinched tight. It was enough room to squeeze a pillow in and really it was ideal. I'm a tosser and a turner so right side, left side, middle, all of it. There were no high spots to speak of, there were no highly compressed spots where I got cold when I was in this bag anyway. Initially in this bag, the over bag, there were some compression points on my hips and my shoulder. I was considering using some newspaper to drape over my high spots to protect me from the elements. And I would do that if the only bag I had was one on the left, but instead I opted for this. So. Like I said a number of times already, I will be hosing them down and trying them wet because that's what really intrigues me. That and I'll probably do a demo on washing them. Not that everybody needs to learn how to wash a sleeping bag. Just uh, a video showing how to, showing that it's actually possible. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and if you haven't gotten a Wiggy's bag already, I would really look into it and consider it. No hasty decisions though. I will be making tons of videos about these bags. Thanks. Okay, I've got a few more things to say after thinking about this all day today. One of the few things that I didn't mention was how small this overbag packs up. So that's 10 inches by nine inches I believe it's two pounds and remember guys when I was testing this I wasn't wearing a toque or anything on my head like I usually would so for it to perform that well without a toque or some kind of cover like a tent that's very impressive so if you're limited for space and the weight that you can carry then just this would be my choice but of course both bags working together to create the FTRSS system is definitely the ideal